Hey guys, welcome back to Mad About Skin. In today's video, we are talking the super popular Korean skincare brand, COSRX. Now, COSRX aren't a brand you've seen me feature a lot here on Mad About Skin. There's a couple of reasons for that that I'll come on to later in the video. However, now I thought was a great opportunity to talk about the pros and the cons of the brand, because not only do they have an end of summer sale, meaning you can save some of your hard earned coin on their favorite product, but they've also launched a new and much hyped range of slightly higher active formulations than we're used to seeing from the Korean skincare market. I thought this was a great opportunity to do a deep dive into this brand to help you guys work out whether it's one that you want to use for your own skincare routine. Sit back, relax, let's talk all things COSRX. Now, before we get into this video, I would love to know what your own thoughts, feelings, and opinions are when it comes to COSRX. So sound up in the comments section below and let me know any personal favorite products that you have from this brand. Whilst you're down there, promise me you'll also give this video a thumbs up and a like. The more likes a video gets, the more widely YouTube distributes the video on its platform, which just means it's a wonderful way of helping me or any other content creator you enjoy reaching a maximum possible audience. And for that, I'm always so, so grateful. Now, I've got an awful lot to say, so should we just cut that waffle and delve straight on in. I break this down into timestamps which are all linked in the description box below. We'll first talk about COSRX as a brand and their backstory. They'll come on to the pros, the positives that the brand has to offer. We'll then come on to some drawbacks and limitations and finally I'll mention some of my favourite products from the brand. If you want to skip to one section over another, everything you need is in the description box below so use that to navigate your way through. So, COSRX as a brand, a relative newcomer in the skincare world, but one that kind of hit the ground running. They really started to ramp up the popularity of their products, and they were one of the first brands that really engaged influencers in the skincare space to kind of promote their brand and what they had to offer. I think as a brand, they're most famous for their snail mucin line, which they were one of the first brands to kind of make this ingredient commercially available to us here in the West, and it just took off. It became a very, very hyped and popular ingredient, and one I've covered on the channel before, which I'll leave a link to up there. I think, you know, getting on that snail musing bandwagon at the right time kind of propelled COSRX to one of the biggest skincare brands in the world. They're not what I call like a traditional Korean skincare brand. In fact, I don't think they get a lot of their sales from the Korean market itself. They're one of those Korean brands that kind of markets predominantly to the West. You can really see this with some of their formulations. They tend to offer higher concentrations than normally you'd see out of the Korean skincare market, where the ethos is very much gentle, slow, and used in the long term to deliver those results. You can also tell from their marketing, their proposition and how they present their products, it's very much geared to a Western audience and a Western market, which you know what, there's no shade from that, but it's definitely one of those brands that I think is much more popular outside of Korea than it is in their native homeland. They've got a whole suite of products and you know their product range has exploded in the recent years and they offer a product for just about every single skin concern and step in your skincare routine. They work really closely with selected influencers, something that's definitely been the case with their launch of their new high potency active line. That's something that I'm going to come on to later in the video. But I think, you know, well, it's a brand that's worked really hard to cultivate their image, direct their marketing really at the Western audience, and they definitely are deserving of the success that they've received. Like all brands, though, they do have their pros and their cons, which is what I want to come on to in this section of the video. Let's start with the positives, the pros first. The first pro for me is that COSRX are an entirely cruelty-free brand. Now, this is something that matters a whole lot to me. And I know that not everybody shops exclusively cruelty free for their skincare routine. And it all comes down to your personal take on this. But I do think it's wonderful to have an affordable and effective and a well formulated cruelty free skincare line that's quite easily accessible across the globe. COSRX really led the charge with this. And I think, you know, any brand that decides to market affordable and effective cruelty free skincare products always has my heart. The second big pro for me is they're easy to get hold of. I know when we talk Korean skincare, a lot of people say, yeah, I know, but it's really difficult to get. Either you have to import them and you end up with fees, import duties, and a really long wait for that shipping, or sometimes they're just not accessible. COSRX is one of the easiest to get hold of Korean skincare brands. Here in the UK, they're found in Boots, so you can just walk into your drugstore and pick up their products. They're on some of the major international skincare websites, and so it becomes less frustrating than with some other Korean skincare brands. You can kind of shop them, get them to your door with minimum charges and additional shipping, and in a reasonable time frame, which is obviously a huge, huge plus. I love the fact that COSRX really use high concentrations of the active ingredients they're selling. Take snail mucin, for example. You know, in some creams, you'll see a 97% concentration of the active ingredient. In some of their creams, you'll get a 92% concentration. This is really important because, you know, a lot of brands do harness popular ingredients, use them in minuscule quantities to just advertise it as containing that ingredient to sell higher volumes. That's not the case with COSRX. When they use an ingredient loud and proud in their marketing, usually it's a case that 
it comes in a high concentration in that product. And that's something I really like to see. Finally, when it comes to the pros, let's talk transparency. Now, skincare brands haven't always been the most transparent when it comes to the active concentrations in their formulations. I think they always thought that we were going to, you know, make the concoctions ourselves at home. So they squirreled away the formulations and would never share them with us. This is something that has changed recently. You'll see a lot more brands sharing the percentages of their key ingredients, which I love to see. I think, you know, it's 2022. We want to know what we're putting on our skin. Cosrx really led the way with this. From the outset, they were super transparent. They actually shouted about the concentrations of their active ingredients in a way that a lot of brands weren't doing at the time. They won a lot of plaudits for that and I think they really, alongside The Ordinary and some other big, you know, indie brands, well, indie at the time, they led the charge for more transparency in skincare, which is why a lot of the big multinational corporations are really playing catch up with this and starting finally to share their formulations with us and let us know what we're actually using in our skincare routine. So Cosrx, big tick in the box for leading the way with that. Now, with all the pros that I've just shared, you'd be thinking, you know, Cosrx sound like a good guy skincare brand that have a whole lot to offer and that's definitely the case however there are some things that i would call out first and foremost let's talk the price point they used to be super affordable particularly when you compared and contrast them to some other korean staples however recently there's been quite a few and significant price increases so they're no longer the most affordable of the korean skincare brands and i'd say they sit much more mid-market this is definitely the case when i went into boots and looked at some cosrx products and i was genuinely shocked with the price point now they do have a 20% off sale on some of their most popular ones over on Amazon, which I will leave a link to in the description box below if you're interested. That will bring that price point down, but they're not as cost effective as they used to be. And even when you take in international inflation, which is going up, up and up at the moment, I think the price rises have been fairly steep. Also, whilst they badge themselves as a Korean skincare brand, and that really was their selling point from the outset, they don't really stick to that Korean skincare ethos, something I touched on earlier in the video. You'll see a lot of higher concentration actives creep into their formulations, and the Korean skincare ethos really taught us that using a lower concentration, going in gradual and gentle, gives you the results you want in the long term, with minimum risk of irritation and sensitivity in the skin. This kind of ceased to be the case with Cosrx some time ago. You'll also see with their new formulated sunscreen that they're using older style US based filters rather than the newer generation ones you traditionally see in Korean sunscreens. I think this is a little bit disappointing and often you need to be mindful that when you reach for Cosrx you're not really buying into the true meaning behind Korean skincare ethos, you're buying into a brand and their interpretation of it. That's pretty much the case with all Korean brands but I do just want to call that one out. Finally let's talk the number of products that they have. You know originally they had a very select edit of products that really delivered fantastic results. Now they've kind of capitalized on the popular Popularity of certain ingredients and they have so so many different products containing them I think this makes me feel a little bit of it does come across as cash grab it in my opinion only take for example the snail mucin line the original snail mucin 95 97 power essence holy grail went like a bestseller overnight they wanted to capitalize on that and you can now get eye gel patches face creams you can get lotions you can get essences there's a whole suite of different snail mucin products I still think the original was the best and so all of these other products are kind of just geared to get you to spend some of your extra hard-earned coin without adding anything additional to what you're already getting in that original power essence which is just an example of where I think sometimes this brand has lost its way just slightly though you guys might disagree and love some of their other snail mucin products. So this kind of brings me on to their new line. This is getting a lot of attention online. They ran like an online ambassador program giving you know the ordinary everyday consumer the opportunity to become like a Cosrx ambassador. I did join that program. I didn't read much about it but this definitely got a lot more people talking about Cosrx. It was very clever marketing. They launched a new suite of higher potency actives and formulations which was led by James Welsh. Now I'm so glad that they chose James Welsh for this. He's been a huge advocate and supporter of Cosrx for years so whilst this was like a partnership and there was some sponsored element to it it seemed really genuine because I know from watching his videos for years how much he loves this brand so it seemed really authentic which I love to see. This you know I've got mixed feelings about the new products. The sunscreen I am going to give a go because I always think you know the proof of the pudding is in how it applies to the skin but I'm a little bit disappointed they used older style filters I would have preferred they used the newer generation ones that you traditionally see with Korean sunscreens also some of their products seem a little bit over formulated so take the 15% niacinamide now all the data shows that niacinamide works best in the 2 to 5% concentration why are we going for that high extreme 15% that might work if you have super oily acne prone skin but for everyone else it could trigger irritation 
inflammation. The same goes for the hyaluronic acid serum, which I think comes in a 3%. It's a little bit higher than your traditional hyaluronic acid serum that comes in a 2%. And again, I think it's kind of designed to differentiate themselves from the market rather than adding additional value. However, I do love the look of their vitamin C 23% and the way it's formulated means that you're getting a higher potency vitamin C with minimum risk of side effects, which is really, really great to see. Also love the look of their retinoid product, which again, I think is really transparent. You know exactly what you're getting and will deliver you that anti-aging benefit with minimum risk of side effects and irritation. I actually put the vitamin C and the retinoid on order and I can't wait to try it. I'll do a little bit more of an in-depth review for you guys when I've put it through its paces and see the results that I get. I've left a link to those new launches in the description box below, but if you did want to shop them, I would definitely say that the retinoid and the vitamin C is kind of where it's at. So there you have it guys, a brief overview of my thoughts, feelings and opinions when it comes to COSRX. I genuinely think this brand has something different to offer in the market. I applaud them for their stance on being cruelty free at a time when a lot of other Korean skincare brands weren't. They also led the way with transparency which I think has made a lot of multinational corporations follow suit and again I would applaud them to the rafters for being the real catalyst for that alongside some of their other competitors such as The Ordinary. I do think that there are a few too many products in their collection and they all have very similar outcomes. I think that can come off a little bit cash grabby, but you know what? I think they're not the only brand that is guilty of doing this. Lots of brands do, but I think they could streamline the collection to make it a little bit easier for us, the consumer. Overall, I definitely think they're a brand that's worth shopping, particularly when you can get a little bit of a saving, which again, I've linked in the Amazon summer sale below. For me, if I was going to try some of their products, their Cosrx pimple patches, game changing. You can pop them on a zit and it will shrink overnight. Super affordable and they have different sizes, which is really nice to see because not all zits are the same size. I would definitely recommend that Power Essence with that 97% concentration of snail mucin if you like the active ingredient. And they also do a snail mucin 92% in a cream. So if you don't like the slightly slimy texture of the traditional essence, then I think the cream would work really well for you. And this is the product that's kind of taken TikTok by storm and gone viral once again. And I think, you know, genuinely is worth a purchase. Sound off in the comment section below your thoughts, feelings, and opinions, and wherever you are in the world, guys. Stay safe, stay well, love your skin. Take care. Bye!